As a young girl, I got into some really deep, dark things. I was in an abusive family, and so the spirit of rejection gripped my life, and I was looking for acceptance when I felt like I wasn't even looked at or loved or cared for in my family. And so the enemy used that as an open door to get me to stray away from my Christian upbringing. I remember beginning to cut myself with razors, wanting to kill myself, but it was a lot of self-mutilation non-stop. And that opened the door for me to get involved with other girls who were doing that same thing. Most of the time you'll find that kids, young people, or even adults can link up and be in that same vein. And so these girls were doing the same thing. They invited me to watch a movie called The Craft, which was about four witches, Wiccans in high school, and they had all this power and were doing things. And I watched the movie and I decided in myself, I want to do that, I want to pursue that, and I did. And so I began to look up the origins of Wiccan and witchcraft, and I just began to dive into that. For a while, I felt like, well, this is wonderful. Everything is a god. God's not the only god. The tree can be a god, the dog can be a god, goddesses and all these deities. And even in my own self, I thought, and even I can be a god, and there is no one big higher power. And so I strayed far, and the enemy kept leading me darker and darker, and to the point where I remember living in a house with another witch. And we were doing spells, having parties, getting in circles, calling on spirits to arise and come in us. We literally wanted them to come in us as we didn't think it was being possessed. We thought it was giving us power. So we would take drugs to accomplish that. And I remember it starting to get very scary. I wouldn't sleep. I went through so much insomnia. I would hear scratching on the wall behind me. I would be sleeping. I would hear tapping, knocking fingernails over the wall. Lights would bust and break, and we would walk through the house. So after that, I was just like, I'm done with this. And even though I put the craft down, my life was still so tormented, and I was doing a lot of drugs at that point, and it was just really, really bad. So for nine years from that point, my life was in and out of jails, drug addicted to meth, heroin, homeless for a period of time, living in people's sheds in their backyard, just like a wild animal, literally insane in my mind. And then God rescued me and he set me apart and literally delivered me, ripped all of that out in a moment. And it was amazing. So that's a little bit of my story. If you can get the young generation, you can get the world. And so what parents think is a one day thing. It is not a one day thing. It is only an open door that allows children, teens, and even adults to go. If we allow this, this one day, and then later on you'll find that they'll then allow horoscopes and then they'll allow horror movies and sorcery and witchcraft. And next thing you know, they've got healing crystals instead of calling on the name of Jesus. And they've got sage instead of using the authority to tell demons to go. And now we have what we call a mixture that has come in. The devil is not backing off the generation, he's increasing. And if anybody has news or social media, you don't even need me or a prophet to tell you that. That's blatant. The world can tell you that. So he's ramping up and right now they say during this time, in any state, police officers and the ambulance people, the EMS, they can tell you that is the day that they have the most kidnappings, child abductions, murders. For some reason that day everybody is on high alert in the police industry. They know something's going down today. Why is that? And so for me, I feel like it's important that parents, we stop trying to be cool and, well, I don't want my kid to miss out. I want my kid to miss out on demonic stuff. I surely do. And so it was my job to train her up since she was young to know, hey, we don't compromise and serve the devil one day and then serve God 364 days. We don't even participate in that day and we don't need a substitute. Satanists don't have a substitute for Passover. They don't have a substitute for Easter or Resurrection Sunday whatever people want to call it. They just count it like it's nothing to them. Why do Christians have to have a substitute for a day of the dead? Sowin or Samhain, however people want to say it, is really where this has all came from. And it was a day where the people of the town believed that crossing over from summer into fall, that there was that one day where the veil, this veil that they believed held back the dead from people who were alive, that that veil would be very, very thin and you'd be able to cross through. And so they believed that the dead could arise during that time and come into their world. So I mean that's where we get costumes from because what people wanted to do, instead of these spirits coming and acting revenge on them, they would disguise themselves to appear like they were one of the spirits. That's where costumes came from. 
and jack-o'-lanterns that was not so that people can celebrate harvest. You cut the face in those and you put a light in them, those squashes and all that, so that the spirits would look or feel that faces were growling back at them and it would push them back off of the house so that these spirits, the dead, wouldn't come and do vengeance on their house. It's the same thing where they would leave out treats or they felt like if they were kind enough to these evil spirits or whatever, that the spirits wouldn't come in and trick them. So they would offer a treat instead. And so a lot of things, people go, it's so innocent, it's fine. But everything was to do with the dead, this evil, the god of death was supposed to be creating all this happenings. And it's just all steeped in demonic rituals. And for me, I can't find substitute for demonic rituals. I don't need that. I'm a believer. And so we need to understand you can't change the origins. And people do that. They'll go, well, this is a holiday, but we're going to change it and make it a Christian holiday. You can't do that. Just like I cannot take a Ouija board and say, well, we're not going to talk to the dead on the Ouija board. Why don't we just talk to God on the Ouija board? Now, everybody would laugh at that, right? They would be like, no, that's foolish. And it's the same with Halloween. We need to have these hard conversations with our kids and we need to be able to sit them down and just have that face to face and say, hey, this is a real realm. This is what's really going on. And I want to educate you so that you can know. And so they can also provide answers to their friends because peer pressure is real. The kids, they all talk. A lot of schools allow them to come and just participate in Halloween on that day where schools will not allow the children to come in and celebrate the birth of Jesus on his birthday. They don't allow that, but they will allow you to come in and celebrate the day of the dead. That's crazy to me. So I think parents need to know we're in a spiritual battle and Satan is out to kill, steal and destroy. He doesn't take a nap from that. So we need to be on our posts. We need to be the protectors of our family. And one way we can protect our family is say, we don't participate in these things. We're going to close this door. And someone may be listening, watching or reading, and they make, well, what do I do? I've already participated in this. Is the door open? What I did with my family is we just repented. We said, God, we didn't know. Just clean us from this. We just washed us clean. Forgive us for any ignorance on our part. And now we close the door and we move forward in obedience to your word. And then we just close that door and we just say, that's it. We're not participating anymore.